This right here is my Ford Super Duty, which I have dubbed the Super Ute. It's part utilitarian, part dedicated overland rig, and it's incredible. Now I've got a bunch of videos about this build. You can check those down in the description below, but the essence of it is it has a three inch super lift suspension kit on it with Bilstein shocks. It's got method wheels, Firestone MT2s, 37 by 12 and a half. It's got the Next Jump Outfitters all aluminum flat bedside boxes and tailgate, which is just an incredible setup. Running the truck rack, the flated topper, the 23-0 Kabari XL, the 23-0 Peregrine awning, and it is just an incredible setup. But one of the best upgrades I did is completely hidden away. Hidden within the Next Jump Outfitters side box here is a super robust Renogy house battery system. It's got the 100 amp hour heated mini core battery. It has the 1000 watt Renogy inverter, the Rover MPPT, and up on top, the 23-0 Kabari XL is the Renogy Shadow Flux 200 watt solar panel. It uses anti-shade technology to charge even when partially shaded, and it's actually really cool. Even now, it's dirty. It's super dark here, December 1st up in Montana. Um, the sun comes up around 10, kind of skirts the mountains, goes down around five. It is currently one o'clock, panel is sitting flat on the roof and it's still drawing 25 watts, which is really impressive. Most panels would be drawing zero watts. So I like this panel a lot. Now, the only thing this system is missing is the ability to charge off the alternator. Now I definitely don't need it necessarily because the solar panel does a great job. I've never had this get below 80% in any circumstance I've put it in. However, it's just one opportunity missed with this system. And this right here is my 2024 Toyota Tacoma that I have dubbed Taco Supreme. Now, again, I've got a bunch of videos on this entire build. I'll put in the description below, but the gist of it is it's running a Ironman 4x4, three and a half inch foam cell pro kit. It's running Vision Oho wheels, and it's actually running the same tire size as the Super Ute. It's Firestone MT2s, 37 by 12 and a half, and they look awesome on this truck. Again, out back running the Next Jump Outfitters all aluminum flatbed side boxes and tailgate with the truck rack sitting on top of that, a Ironman rooftop tent. And I typically run the flated topper within the truck rack on top of the NJO aluminum side boxes. However, that's the great thing about the flated. It's super easy to take in and out. So it's not in there right now, but it'll go back in soon. Now, really the only thing this build is missing is a dedicated battery system and using battery banks, but it's definitely not optimal. And this right here is the brand new house battery system that we're gonna be installing into Taco Supreme. The heart of the system is right here. And this is the brand new, really, really cool Renogy house battery. And it's 120 amp hour hybrid lithium solid state battery. Now, what's the big deal about solid state batteries? The idea behind a hybrid battery is you're mixing that lithium ion technology and solid state technology. And instead of having a full liquid that is highly flammable, you basically have almost a really thick gel that basically goes through, not as flammable, much safer. It actually has properties that make it more efficient. Um, it's able to hold a charge longer. It's not so temperature finicky, even though this is still a heated battery here in Montana. Right now it's like 15 degrees and my face is freezing off, but this should still be able to charge. Now I'm sure the comment section is gonna completely explode with all the information about these batteries. So be sure to check that out and feel free to add your opinion, whether this technology is good or bad because I want to know. And moving down the line, we have the Renogy DC-DC charger, which is a 30 amp charger. And then you have the Renogy One Core One display, which is going to allow me to be able to check all the vitals of this system. So I know everything is working optimally. And then I'm using the Renogy 1000 watt inverter, which is actually the exact same inverter that is in the Super Ute. I just really liked how it ran everything I threw at it. Not a single bleep out of this thing running whatever AC item I plugged into it. And I've got one more feature. I've got a Lensun 100 watt solar panel that I mounted on the hood about six months ago. And it's actually really cool. It's completely out of sight, out of mind. And it just keeps the Tacoma battery charged at all times. I'm gonna disconnect it from the Tacoma battery and wire that directly into the DC-DC charger. That way we have MPP T charging as well. That way we're getting input from the alternator as well as solar on the hood. This is really gonna be a one and done system. The first thing I do with any build when working with electrical is disconnect the starter battery. Anytime you're working with high amperage electrical systems, this step is critical for safety and protecting your components. Next, I disconnected the existing MPPT controller for my Lensun hood mounted solar panel. 
since the Renogy DC-DC MPPT charger will now manage both solar and alternator charging through one device. From there, I built a standalone wire harness that includes MC4 connectors for the solar input and a dedicated power run from the starter battery to the Renogy DC-DC MPPT charger. One tip that helped out a lot, especially here in Montana in the middle of winter, is warming up your wires before trying to unspool everything and get it into the wiring harness. Cold wire is stiff wire and miserable to deal with. I was running my new H calorie diesel heater all day long to keep myself warm and use that same heat to warm the wires as well. Once they're heated, they unroll easier and become much more flexible. Once the harness was built, I routed it up under the truck, up into the engine bay, and then along the frame towards the rear. To secure the wiring along the frame, I used these really great magnetic zip tie mounts that I found on Amazon. It's a really strong magnet. It made routing incredibly clean and simple without drilling into the frame, and they're strong enough that I'm confident that everything will stay long-term. With the wiring run, I test fit all the components inside the side box to determine the layout and spacing. I then cut a half inch plywood mounting panel measuring 20 by 22 inches and obviously this is going to change for your application but the, for me this was the perfect size. Once the panel was cut I gave everything a good test fit again. Once everything made sense from a layout and clearance perspective I marked and drilled mounting holes for each component. I test fit the finished size panel in the box and marked and drilled all the holes in the aluminum side box from Next Jump Outfitters. I also drilled a half inch hole to feed the wire through the back of the flatbed and then another half inch hole directly next to it to feed it into the side box where it's gonna live. Once the holes were drilled, I filed down every edge. Aluminum can be incredibly sharp and the last thing I want is wire chafing over time. Taking a few extra minutes here goes a long way in protecting the system. For all high amperage connections, I used large gauge eyelets crimping with a hydraulic crimper, and sealed everything with marine grade heat shrink. This part is tedious, but it's also where reliability is won or lost. Solid mechanical connections and proper sealing are absolutely worth the time. I mounted the components to the panel in stages, starting with the Renogy One Core display, then the 1000 watt Renogy inverter, and then the inline fuses and fuse blocks. Next, I installed the Nylite DC-DC power panel. Because the ports on the back of the DC panel are fairly thick, I had to use half-inch spacers to space the whole assembly off the wooden panel. Even with that, I still need spacers on the back side because this whole assembly is very thick. After that, I'm installing the Renogy DC-DC MPPT charger and then begin wiring the system. I start with the Nylite DC panel, which is a simple positive and negative connection. The positive runs into the resettable fuse block, and from there, another positive lead will eventually contact with the Renogy S1 Pro battery. The Renogy One core display also gets its own dedicated positive and negative connection. There are a couple wires included with the Renogy kit that I didn't use. The red wire from the DC-DC charger kit is intended for smart alternators. Fortunately, my truck doesn't have that. There's also a battery temperature sensor. Since the S1 Pro battery is internally heated, it is not required. I'm also installing the Renogy BT2 Bluetooth module. At first, I wasn't sure if I needed it, but it's much easier to install it now than tear apart the system to install it later. I'm glad I did because it turns out I do actually need it. For cable management, I used a very simple and affordable method that worked extremely well. For the main power run, I used two zip ties through the panel connected to another zip tie on the backside. It keeps the cables perfectly straight, looks clean, and doesn't cost hardly anything. All the remaining wiring is managed on the back side of the panel. Everything is secured, hidden, and carefully routed so there's no strain or abrasion. This keeps the system clean and protects the wiring long term. With everything wired on the panel, I mounted it into the Next Jump Outfitter side box. Once again, I used half inch spacers to space the panel off the aluminum box itself. This gave me enough clearance for the wiring behind the panel as well as the DC power panel from Nylite. At this point, I begin the final wiring into the battery. The power wire from the starter battery connects to the alternator input on the Renogy DC-DC charger. I cut the cable to length, crept on an eyelet, and sealed it with heat shrink before I installed it. Next, I wired the positive and negative leads from the 1000 watt inverter directly to the battery. The Renogy S1 Pro solid state battery is mounted inside the box using two hard mounted brackets. The brackets are secured to the box using black stainless hooks, and the battery itself is held down with a roller cam strap. This strap is extremely secure. 
this battery isn't going anywhere, even off-road. At this point, everything is wired directly to the battery, and while it's definitely a tedious process, it's also the most exciting part. You know, the project is almost finished. I've been working on this project for three days, and the real reason is because it's just cold out. Like, it's really hard to do electrical work at these temperatures at high of in the mid-20s, low in single digits. It's just really not optimal. However, the project is finally done. Meet the new Taco Supreme Renergy House Battery System. Now, how good does that look? I would truly rate this project at the moderate of difficulty levels. It's not complicated. What it is, it's just a lot of tedious wiring, and it just definitely can get overwhelming when you have eight wires coming out of one thing and you have to remember where everything goes. So there's definitely is some nuance to this kind of project. However, it is completely doable. All you have to do is follow the steps that I kind of presented in the video, and you can 100% do this in your garage. Let's talk about the whole system, and I'll kind of tell you what I like about it and what I wish Renogy would kind of fix more than anything else. Starting here front and center is the brand new solid state lithium ion 120 amp hour Renogy battery, and it is brand new technology, and it is super cool. Uh, the more I research these batteries, the more I'm really digging my choice and going with this over just a standard lithium ion battery. The battery casing is again, all metal. It's got the feet that attach to it, which I attached to the front here. The battery is held in it nice and secure with the roller cam strap on two brackets onto bolts that actually hold the box onto the flatbed. And it's a really slick system. This roller cam is in there really, really tight. It's not going anywhere. I've used the same system in the Super Ute and it works really well. The battery also Bluetooth communicates with the core as well as the Bluetooth app. So I have lots of redundant ways to check the status of the battery. The best part about this battery is honestly, I think in my opinion, the safety. The chance is not zero that I either roll this or take a side impact because this battery is right here on the side. I have much better peace of mind knowing that this is a much safer option as far as lithium batteries go. And hey, safety third, that's what I would say. The 1000 watt inverter is tactically positioned all the way on the left side, kind of behind the battery. Two reasons. One is I have room under the inverter to kind of hide the wires of the inverter itself as well as some of the wires from the battery. And then two, on top, I have a lot of room to be able to access the AC port to plug things in as well as the on off switch. So, and actually I can see it, which is even better. So not having to just feel where the plug goes, I can see it. So it's actually in a great position. Next, we have the Renogy DC-DC MPPT charger that is all the way in the top right corner. Not something that I have to access often. I just have to be able to see the lights to see what is charging and what is happening with the inverter even though it does communicate with the app as well as the core. So it's not incredibly important that I see those lights, but it's good to know at a quick peek what is actually charging and what is not charging. And below that, I have my Nylite DC outlets with my voltmeter as well as my power switch that actually turns the panel on and off so it doesn't just run for no reason. And currently I have three cigarette lighter outlets as well as two USB outlets, but I might actually swap out one of the cigarette lighter outlets for a double USB-C outlet. That's the great thing about these panels is you can just kind of pull them off, configure them how you want them, put them back together. They're just a pretty standard outlet. Now I know you guys are laughing right now because you probably saw the 80 amp resettable breaker go into the DC power panel. And that is because that's all I had. So basically it's a placeholder right now. I've got a 20 amp breaker coming in from Amazon. I um, just haven't gotten it yet. I had, I thought I had two, but come to find out the second one that I ordered a while ago was an 80 amp. So I kind of shot myself in the foot there, but got one coming. I'll swap that out as soon as it gets here. Next to that is another large fuse that is the power cable from the DC-DC charger to the battery. And then you have the display of the Renogy Core 1 display. And that's honestly one of the things I'm having an issue with. It just isn't super intuitive. It doesn't exactly tell you what I want to know. And there's only one real display screen and it's, you can't change it. It's, I think it's very, um, for as good as it looks and for as high tech as it looks, it's super rudimentary. It only tells you kind of very basic general information. It doesn't cycle through. You can't change anything. Like I would like to know what solely what the solar input is and wattage, voltage, all that good stuff. And it doesn't do that. It only tells you solar input and amperage and that's it. It only tells you the DC amperage um, or the DC input from the alternator in amperage. It won't tell you any other ways. It also doesn't tell you the percentage of the battery. It only tells you what the voltage of the battery is. 
So it's not super intuitive. Um, it also won't sync to my app on my phone. It gives a QR code with the scan, but that leads you to some nonsense thing. So it's not great. There's definitely a lot of room for improvement from Renergy to make this thing much better. I actually prefer the old school on the sec, uh, third gen Tacoma. I have the Renergy display that is just a really rudimentary black screen that just tells you your small percentages. I prefer that better because it's actually more information that is pertinent to what I'm actually using and not just fluff information that I really don't need. And then on the bottom there, you have the BT2 Bluetooth communicator, which again, isn't great. It syncs right to the app. Um, the app is good, but not great. You have one page of information. It's not super intuitive. And I still can't get the DC DC charger to sync to the app. It once it sees it, but it won't sync to it. I don't know why. So there definitely are some interactive issues with this Renergy system. However, it still works, it works great, and I'm able to see what's happening. It's just not giving me everything I wanna know at just one finger touch. It's all in a beautiful package and I could not be happier how this turned out. There are some things that Renogy could definitely do a little bit better, but overall, the app is better than the display and it still gives me information I want, so what else can I say? All right, guys, hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. All right, now this is really cool. It's a couple days later and I was out moving the super unit around. I just want to check the status of the panel and it's warmed up a little bit. So a lot of the ice chunks on here are gone. But if you look at the panel, it is wet and it's actually partially covered in snow. It's currently 11 o'clock in Montana. The solar panel is laying completely flat on top of the super ute. The sky is gray and nasty and there's barely any sun. Let me clean it off and see if we can get any better. So right now we're drawing 25.6 volts and 0.82 amps, which equals 21.64 watts. Let's see if we can get this thing cleaned off and get any better. Currently we're drawing 31.4 volts and 1.36 amps, which is gonna give us a total of just over 42.39 watts. That's pretty good out of a panel laying flat. Let's angle it up towards the sun. You can kind of see the sun kind of poking out right over here just a little bit. Let's see if we can angle it up towards the sun a little bit and just kind of see what we get. I'm just curious. Currently we're drawing 1.47 amps and 31.8 volts, which gives us 46.7 watts, which is definitely not bad. So that's a quick update of the Shadow Flux panel up here in Montana. Uh, it drew pretty good wattage, even partially covered. And then once I cleared it and then gave it angle, it actually went up quite a bit, uh, almost 40 watts out of a 200 watt panel. And conditions like this is pretty good. It's about 33 degrees and really cloudy overcast. The sun is barely over the mountain, so there's not a lot of UV. Uh, snow's coming off the roof because it kind of warmed up in a really odd way. But yeah, Shadow Flux is rocking, really. 40 watts, pretty good.